So today we're going to look at the uh, CME2 7.1 uh, frequency analysis tool. If you got a plus drive and updated firmware, you should be able to uh, gain access to this new tool. Uh, this will do a uh, sign sweep. Uh, I'm going to look at first the closed loop current, but we can also do open loop velocity. Um, so, you know, we want to check out some resonances in a system here. Uh, we can start at a frequency, end at a frequency, do some number of steps, hit start. And the firmware starts to um, gather the data by sweeping the frequency and looking at the, the magnitude gain and the phase. And you can hear it a little bit here. I've got a uh, uh, Sanya Denke motor with high count, 131,072 counts per rev. I got a gear, maybe it's like a three to one. I got a, I got a belt on this system here. This is a, a H bot or a T bot, and uh, you know, see so this, this piece, the orange piece moves, and I'm just holding it still at the end here. And I'm using a BEL ExcelNet Plus drive to do the, uh, the testing. So you can see that the gains uh, of the current loop is flat and it goes out and then starts to roll off. Uh, we've got a, a minus 3 dB point here at about 1, 2, 3, 400 hertz. That's a little sluggish. Uh, I like about a kilo, kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. And then the phase starts at zero and rolls off. Uh, had we gone further, you could see where the phase shift was, uh, 180 degrees. So lots of gain margin, lots of phase margin here. You know, phase of zero, gain of one, and you got a resonator, so you got to stay away from that. But we're going to take a look at what we did here to uh, get this current loop, and then we'll investigate the velocity loops after that. But so I started with the Sanya Denke motor data inertia. I didn't add the load inertia, so I'm just working off the motor inertia. Um, the values that are originally are used here are calculated by a math model based on the data we input. So we get some, you know, pretty good uh, values here. Um, you know, I'm, I may have a mistake with entering my data. Maybe it's, you know, 4.3 millihenry, uh, millihenry phase to neutral. Well, the inductance is phase to phase. So maybe it's really 8 millihenry across the pair of wires. But that's okay. We're going to tune it. So we get, you know, some pretty good data, get a pretty good calculate. You can see the calculated values of CP and CI are not nice round numbers. So they're like, you know, very, you know, 31, right? I, I, I do 30. So these are not human numbers. These are calculated numbers. So normally when I tune the current loop, I uh, apply a current auto setup checkbox, hit start, small signal. And uh, set my interval to zero. Let's go for double the current loop gain. I'm looking for the point at which I get an overshoot. And uh, oops, 4,000. So I'm starting to get a little peaking here. So there's a little overshoot. So I'm just going to cut this number in half. Uh, yeah, it's a large inductance. So I got a slew rate limit. If the interval term is too high, you'll get uh, interval wind up and overshoot. You can see the slew rate limit there. I'm running this 8 millihenry with 26 volts, so it's a little, a little droopy there. So the goal is to get the steady state without much interval overshoot. And uh, this looks pretty good here, 1,500. And uh, I'll hit stop, and then we're going to try the... Um, frequency analysis tool again and see what the sweep looks like here. Okay, so the current sweep now is flat gain, goes out and rolls off to about 1.2 kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. So this is a good way to gather frequency over time data or uh, phase or gain over frequency so out of the time domain into the frequency domain. And then, of course, you can save the plot to a file and open it up as a comma-separated value file. 
for analysis with other tools like MATLAB. Now we're going to take a look at the velocity loop, uh, auto set up checkbox, command and actual velocity. Uh, here's the gains. Uh, these are the calculated values. Uh, we can see the shift, the system is uh, shaking and baking over here, rocking and rolling. Um, so that's the uh, calculated values. So when we do the frequency analysis on the closed loop, so this is the closed loop velocity sweep. Uh, goes out pretty flat, then rolls off. Uh, starting at phase zero, I got a 180 phase shift here at about 100 and something hertz, and I'm down 15 decibels, so no oscillations. There's a little blip here around 50, 60 hertz. We'll investigate that further. But, uh, you know, you, you start rolling off uh, just before 200 hertz. Uh, this is explained by the pole at the output of the velocity loop. It's a two pole. Uh, we can switch it to a single pole, and that'll, that'll move out. So we're going to take a look at the, uh, the tuning of the velocity loop in the normal way now. And uh, we'll see what we can get out of this, uh, this tuning here. So again, if my gains are too high for my VP, I'll start seeing ringing. Um, I move the pole to a single pole, give us a little phase margin. In the next week, we should see the, uh, there you go. So, the location of the uh, filter frequency and the gain. Again, that's a little ripply, the gain's a little high. I like to bring it up to oscillations and we cut it in half. So, let's just check it out again to make sure that we got not too much, but there's a little ringing going on here. Uh, I'm going to move the pole down here, single pole, uh, maybe 200 hertz. It's a very mechanical system here, so there may be lots of resonances. So we're going to do open loop velocity with a stimulation current of 175 amps, 1.75 amps. The start frequency will be at 1 hertz and go to a kilohertz with 100 sample steps. Uh, how can you do open loop, you might ask? Well, you have to close the loop and put an excitation in and look at the output over input to get the gain and the phase margin. So that's kind of a bit of a trick, but we're going to see how that works. So we'll start with a little, really low frequency and start gathering the data. Skipping ahead here. And some kind of resonance there. So here's the open loop gain. We got 5 dB. Goes out flat. There's a little funny business between 20, 30 hertz here. Uh, there's another funny business around 100 and, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 hertz there. Uh, and then it rolls off. Um, so these are, looks like sort of mechanical places of resonance. Uh, we get about a 3 dB around the 200 hertz. That's the output of the velocity loop pole. And uh, we've got some uh, phase shift here. Uh, I guess starts at about 180 and flips over around zero here. So the gain is less than zero at this point. So we have stability. Um, but we're probably getting a little bit of... Uh, integrator wind up there. Uh, I push the integral on it. Uh, the 
flatten out, but you know, there's a zero to extend the uh, velocity. So I'm going to cut that down a little bit. And um, maybe let's try a notch at this frequency here and see if we can notch it out. Okay, so here's a notch filter uh, with the cutoff, sorry, at 100 to 150. And then I did the sweep, and you can see, yeah, it, it, it really is an effective notch. Um, I no longer get the bump up there. Uh, but I think maybe I'm just going to try a lower frequency pole here. Uh, I had a 50 hertz oscillation, so maybe if I used a 50 hertz pole there, you could still get stability. So we'll take a look at that. So I'm, I'm trying to pull at 25 hertz. I got rid of the notch. And if we look at the phase shifting from minus or from 180 down to zero, and then look up at the gain, we're down to minus 30 decibels, so lots of gain margin, uh, lots of phase margin, and uh, we go off pretty flat and roll off heavily here. But uh, you know, the resonance around 50 hertz is it's a lot of mechanical stuff going on here, so there's a little funny business. Um, but, you know, one school of thought is reduce the, the bandwidth so that you don't excite anything, and the other is, you know, when you get disturbed, have high bandwidth to correct for it. So I'm just going to make a little move. You can see the, uh, the disturbance in the mechanical system four times per the move. Uh, a little S-curve would, would be better. I'm actually pushing into a load here, so I got a little integral to steady state. Uh, but there's the bounce, 25 hertz or less, based on the mechanical system. So this feels very well behaved, no big jerking, just normal tuning and settling. Okay, so here's with the pole at 300 hertz, single pole, high gains. And uh, this is uh, rather well behaved. I think I like this, uh, like this tuning a little better if there's a disturbance based on the mechanical system, we have gains to make corrections. Um, so, so much for the 25 hertz, I think that's acceptable as the, uh, it's not a large inertia on here yet, and we get some pretty good tuning with high gains. So, let's use, uh, let's move the pole out, and crank up the gains, get maximum stiffness. There's a little disturbance in there, but hey, you know, we can see it on the frequency analysis, and we can avoid it, or we can correct for it. Thanks for watching.